ನಾರಾಯಣಂ ನಮಸ್ಕೃತ್ಯ ಧರಂ ಚೈವ ನರೋತ್ತಮ ದೇವೀಂ ಸರಸ್ವತೀಂ ವ್ಯಾಸ ತಥೋ ಜಯ ಮುದೀರೇತ್ ನಮಿಸಿ ನಾರಾಯಣನ ನರನ ಪುರುಷೋತ್ತಮನ ವ್ಯಾಸ ವಾಗ್ದೇವಿಯರ ಬಳಿಕ ಬೇಡುವುದು ಜಯವ ಇನ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ವೀಡಿಯೋ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ನರೇಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಜನರಲ್ ಆಲ್ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ದಿ ಜಿಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿ ಬಿಗಿನಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಮಹಾಭಾರತ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಕಸ್ಟಮರಿ ಟು ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ದಿ ಸ್ಟೋರಿ ಆಫ್ ಮಹಾಭಾರತ ವಿತ್ ಕಿಂಗ್ ಶಾಂತನು ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸತ್ಯವತಿ ಬಟ್ ಐ ವುಡ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಟು ಬಿಗಿನ್ ಮೈ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಎಪಿಸೋಡ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಎಪಿಕ್ ವಿತ್ ದಿ ಆಥರ್ ಆಫ್ ಮಹಾಭಾರತ ನಾನ್ ಅದರ್ ದೆನ್ ದಿ ರೆವರೆನ್ ಸ್ಟೇಜ್ ವೇದ ವ್ಯಾಸ ಹೇ ವಾಟ್ಸಪ್ ಸ್ಮಾರ್ಟ್ ಕಿಡ್ಸ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಹಿಯರ್ so yeah it's a new day for new opportunities new possibilities let's crash it so yeah it's the first episode of mahabharata with the reverend sage maharshi vedavyasa so i would like to start my episodes of mahabharata with the author of mahabharata who is none other than vedavyasa but as usual mahabharata starts with king shantanu of hastinapur and satyavati but i would like to start my episodes of mahabharata with the author of mahabharata okay so let's go into the video we all know that there are four vedas the rig veda yajur veda samveda and atharva veda the greatest epic of mahabharata is considered the fifth veda before the four vedas were split into four there was only one veda but the credit of separating one great epic veda into four parts goes to this sacred seer vedavyasa after separating one veda into four parts vedavyasa was very perturbed because people reading earlier one veda as a single entity used to have complete knowledge of veda but now after splitting the vedas into four parts any one perusing any one veda would get only one fourth knowledge of the earlier only one veda therefore sage veda vyasa conceived the idea of writing the story of mahabharat which contains the gist of entire four vedas that is the reason the great epic of mahabharata is rightly called the fifth veda but alas there was one problem marshi veda vyas would conceive and recite the shlokas or hymns from his memory but who will write down those shlokas or hymns he would recite then lord brahma appeared before veda vyasa and advised him to request lord ganesha the elephant faced god to do the writing of the shlokas recited by veda vyasa sage veda vyasa prays lord ganesha to help him by taking down shlokas recited by him even though ganesha accepts to be a scribe of veda vyasa lord ganesha puts a condition what is it that is that veda vyasa should recite the hymns without any break or pause if veda vyasa stops or pauses then ganesha would stop the work of taking down the hymns oh that would be very difficult as veda vyasa should conceive and then compose the shlokas and to recite them without a pause in between shlokas would be extremely difficult but veda vyasa agrees to the condition of not ganesha but he insists that ganesha should write down the shlokas only after fully comprehending the meaning of the hymns 
and thus began the writing of the great epic Mahabharat. See, Dvita Vyasa was not only the author of Mahabharata, he was also a key character in the story of Mahabharat. Both Pandavas and Kauravas are his grandsons. The greatest and most reverend sage Vedu Vyasa was born to a sage by name Parashara. His mother was a fisher woman known as Satyavati. Vedu Vyasa was born on an island on the bank of the river Yamuna. His birthplace is Kalpi. Once when Shades Parashara was to cross the river Yamuna, he takes a boat which was rowed by a beautiful lady. While on the boat, Shades Parashara was astounded and enchanted by the beauty of this fisher woman who was rowing the boat. Sage Parashara tells the fisherwoman Satyavati that he wants a child from her. Even though Satyavati initially disagrees, she ultimately agrees and puts a condition that the child born out of their union should be a great scholar and a sage and not become a fisherman. Parashara readily agrees to it and thus Vedavyasa was born. The child was known as Krishna Dvaitayana. The child was black in color and therefore he was called Krishna. And because he was born on an island, he was called Dvaitayana. After the birth of Krishna Dvaitayana, the fishy odor of Satyavati was replaced by a pleasant smell. Immediately after the birth of Krishna Dvaitayana, the child grew up to become a young man instantly by the miraculous power of Parashara. The young man followed his father immediately. But leaving his mother, Krishna Dvaitayana assures his mother that he would be at her side whenever she so desires and needs. And Sayyid Vidavyasa fulfills his promise to his mother as we will see the story of Mahabharata unfolds. This is the story of the greatest of the great sage Vedavyasa. So this was my first episode on Mahabharata guys. So I hope you have un understood the concepts of Mahabharata, the author of Mahabharata and stuff. And also the next episode of Mahabharata will be coming out soon. So stick on with me and also thanks for watching. So guys, I wanted to introduce you to someone who is my best friend, Smart Kirzi. Let's meet him. Come on, hey Smart everyone. Kirzi. So I am Smart Kirzi, a yeah. best friend of Shreya's. So I wanted yeah, to yeah, introduce you, up. him, yeah. to you guys. Yeah, smart. So he's an awesome video maker. He's also yeah. an awesome video editor. He makes his own yeah. video. He <laughs> makes his own video alone. Yeah, no none other him. than Shreya's. Okay. So guys, if you haven't seen the introduction to Mahabharata, the first one, then please watch it right now, right there, okay? So another video from Pankiji right there, and also meet you in the next one, guys.